Hi, this is Leo, and what you see behind me is one of Crestron's QE test labs for Zoom. In this video, we'll go over some of the details of Zoom, designing, commissioning, and some of the frequently asked questions. Hello and welcome to video one of a series of training videos on Zoom. This video will focus on the fundamental knowledge you need to understand to start becoming a Zoom master. So without further ado, let's begin. In this video, we'll go over the architecture of Zoom and we'll work our way down to the building blocks. We'll also go over some Zoom system design and the details of how Zoom works out of the box. Zoom is a Crestron wireless solution to lighting control in commercial and other spaces. It was designed to be fast and easy system to install and affordable. The main components are dimmers, keypads, load controllers, and sensors for occupancy and daylighting. Zoom can also be controlled and monitored from a centralized location. What this means for the user is that you don't require a control system, programming, or a laptop to commission it. Best of all, the system is wireless. You don't need long wire runs. Zoom is easily scalable and can be installed in stages. Let's cover some information about the Zoom architecture. At the bottom right, what you see here are the Zoom areas or spaces. Each Zoom space is comprised of a mix and match of Zoom devices to meet the requirements or specifications of a client. At this point, this is the only thing anyone would need to have a functional Zoom system. Devices above the dotted lines are all optional devices. Adding network bridges allows you to do advanced commissioning from the Zoom app on smart devices. AV Bridge and AV Keypad allows AV installers to interact with the Zoom spaces via RS-232. Information from each Zoom space will be passed on and reflected in the Zoom cloud without hard requirements on the data path. Zoom can handle pretty much every functionality you would want in a space from recalling scenes, raising and lowering individual load controllers, or control by zone or group. You can have the space controlled by occupancy or vacancy information. And Zoom supports fully automated daylight harvesting. You can even control your receptacles to meet new building code requirements. Again, keep in mind that rooms are not reliant on gateway or control system to operate. These add higher level functionality, but are not required for normal operation. Let's quickly overview the four different categories where we can put all Zoom devices. We'll dive into details later in this video. Zoom has 0 to 10 volt forward reverse phase dimmers and basic load switching. It has both AC and battery powered wireless keypads. Occupancy, vacancy, and photocell sensors. Zoom also has several interfaces to help you mix and match what you may want to do. These include NetBridges, AV Bridge, and Contact Closure Module. Infrastructure components allow you to monitor the Zoom system building wide. You can also remote trigger actions like scene recall and set up automated time clock events. For your information, these are some of the things you should keep in mind. Zoom will not communicate with Infinity X or vice versa. The Zoom app allows easy commissioning and room configuration from your smart device. Connect to the network bridge via Bluetooth and adjust scene levels and much more. For a full in-depth explanation of the Zoom app, please see the Crestron Zoom app video, where we commission a live system and explain everything you need about the app to commission a Zoom space. As we mentioned before, the Zoom Floor Hub provides an at-glance overview of what's happening in the building. You can use your computer web browser to access the Zoom Hub interface. You can also see the Zoom Floor Hub breakdown video for a complete explanation of setting up the Zoom Floor Hub, adding your newly commissioned Zoom spaces, and creating and saving time clock events. Okay, now on to some specs of each one of the Zoom devices. I'll go over these fairly quickly and you can feel free to pause if you wish to read it in detail. Wool boxes come in a few flavors. Aesthetically, they look like the regular Crestron COW dimmers or switches. All wall boxes operate on 100 to 277 volts, protected by 8 amp fuse for safety. The 0 to 10 can both source or sync up to 60 milliamps. Dimmers or switches are only available as a rocker button layout and are three standard color options. 
Keep in mind that switches or dimmers do not serve as a keypad to control other devices. Each device controls itself. JBox load controllers will be mounted directly to a junction box, typically behind drop ceilings or the like. These will control one or more sets of loads. JBoxes come in 0 to 10 dimmer, switching operation, and receptacle control. It uses arcless switching. The plug load controller does not react to keypads. It turns on based only on occupancy information. The JBox also has a port to connect the network bridge and a contact closure. AC keypads are available as a rocker or four button layouts. Buttons have a fixed functionality. Top buttons recall scene one, bottom button turns the lights off, and the additional middle buttons recall scene two and scene three. Pressing and holding the top or lower button raises or lowers the lights. The battery keypad is available in three button layouts, two button, four button, and six button. It has a five year battery life. Buttons have a fixed functionality similar to the AC keypad. The additional two buttons in the middle are used to raise and lower the lights. There is a special six button version that has the capability to disable sensors via button press. The battery occupancy sensor is available as occupancy or a vacancy sensor. Vacancy sensors will only turn lights off and not on. It uses a 9 volt battery and it has a 10 year life. This sensor is similar to the Crestron GLS OIR CSM EX. It has a 500 square foot coverage. You may add a maximum of 8 sensors to each zoom space. Tapping the test button will turn lights on and off in the room it's controlling. The LED blinks green if the sensor is declaring occupancy or red for low battery. The Zoom Photocell is an open loop light sensor that brings daylight harvesting to any zoom space with a window. This means that the system can use outside brightness through the window to determine how bright the light should be inside the room. You can also only have desired lights perform daylight harvesting. So the lights right by the window may dim up and down based on your outdoor brightness, but the light towards the center of the building away from the window will not change intensity. It uses two AAA batteries and reports the light level every 15 seconds. The sensor has a 10 year battery life. There should only be one photo cell in every zoom space and on site the sensor should be installed about six feet from the window. On to the JBox SIM. This JBox allows you to use GLS ODT non-system or other occupancy sensor to send occupancy information into the zoom space. It can work as occupancy or vacancy. If you want the zoom space to work as vacancy, simply plug in your occupancy sensor signal wire into the connector labeled V for vacancy. So when the sensor reports vacancy, the zoom system will turn the lights off. When the sensor goes occupied, the lights will not automatically come on. It will require button presses on the keypad. The detection threshold is 8 volts. This means that voltage in the connector above 8 volts is considered logic high. Voltage below 8 volts is considered logic low. The JBox SIM also allows you to connect a photo cell for daylighting. The JBox SIM also provides 6 watts of power to any and all connected sensors. The Zoom Net Bridge is the backbone of centralizing control and reporting to Zoom. Each network bridge connects up to a JBox and uses Infinity X Mesh technology to connect up to the Zoom Hub and pass all the room telemetry. It also lets you use a Bluetooth device to perform quick and advanced commissioning on the Zoom space. It has a single bicolor LED for feedback status. So one of the coolest features is that you don't have to walk around and join these guys to your Infinity X mesh network. These guys can automatically connect when told to do so. This process is called Network Auto Formation, NAF for short. There should only be one network bridge in a Zoom space. The AV bridge is similar to the network bridge in that it allows anyone with an RS-232 port to control a Zoom space and perform all sorts of simple and advanced actions. The easiest way for an AV integrator to gain control of the Zoom area. You can also communicate with the AV bridge via the micro USB port. Some example actions of control are recalling scene, getting occupancy state information, turning on specific loads, and much more. This device is very small and can be mounted locally in the room in an AV rack. 
The AV keypad works in conjunction with the AV bridge and is available in the identical button layouts as the Zoom battery keypad. The main function of the AV keypad is to report button presses to the AV bridge. The dealer or installer can then in turn use these presses to trigger any action on their AV system or the like. For example, button one could initiate a presentation mode in the conference room and the up and down buttons could raise and lower the volume or whatever may be desired. When designing a Zoom space, here are the main things to keep in mind. You can put up to 32 devices in one Zoom space. A Zoom space could be a classroom, conference room, or an open office area. This includes a total number of devices, load controllers, keypads, sensors, etc. Each Zoom space should only have a maximum of one photo cell, one network bridge, and one AV bridge. There should be no more than eight battery keypads, eight occupancy or vacancy sensors. You should never mix occupancy and vacancy sensors in the same space. It should only be one or the other. Also, each Zoom AC device can parent up to six battery devices. This means if you have more than six battery devices, you would need to have at least one AC device for every six battery devices. So if you have a classroom with eight occupancy sensors, one battery keypad, and one J-Box, you will need an additional J-Box power supply to parent the additional three battery children. You can add up to 50 network bridges per Zoom gateway and eight gateways per floor. The maximum room limit of a floor hub is 200 rooms. It is good practice to design within the distances between the nodes as shown. Making sure you consider the environment is crucial. Are there any walls or structures that may affect wireless signal propagation? How far are the Zoom devices from each other? Do you need to consider adding power supply units to route messages? Don't forget to consider cubicle walls. Will the occupancy sensor see all employees at their seat? Are there enough occupancy sensors in the open office area? After adding your Zoom devices to the space, outline and define which areas will work together as a Zoom space. For example, see the floor plan below. For very large open office floors, plan to section areas and pair to keep within the 32 device limit. It is important to have a detailed outlining of the scope of operation. This will describe which keypads control which load controllers in the space. If you have multiple keypads, A, B, C, outline your loads in your Zoom space to show which loads will be controlled by which keypads A, B, or C. Let's talk about connecting a legacy Crestron system to Zoom. We have two modules that will facilitate integration, both which require the presence of a floor hub. The mirror module which allows legacy control systems like a Pro 3 to have very basic control and status from a specific Zoom room. It allows things like scene recall, feedback, and enabling and disabling occupancy control. The external room module will allow you to take a collection of non-Zoom legacy devices and have them show up in the Zoom floor hub as a Zoom space. This module allows the Zoom hub to also trigger actions like scene recalls and trigger time clock events on these external rooms. Now we have the AV Bridge, a nifty device that allows anyone who does not have to understand or know anything about Crestron to have full control of a Zoom space. For an in-depth breakdown of incorporating these room modules and AV Bridge, please refer to our training videos on this topic. Now that we've covered all Zoom components, let's take a look at how it works. Once you've gone around and paired and joined all devices you expect to function together, it's very intuitive, beautiful, and simply, it just works. AC keypads or battery keypads control all loads in the space. They mainly raise, lower the lights, and perform scene recalls. Each load controller can store up to 16 scenes and keypad buttons can recall scenes one through three. Occupancy sensors recall scene one when they report occupancy. They recall scene 16 when they go vacant. Vacancy sensors do not turn lights on, but they do report occupancy so that it can be reflected on the Zoom hub. 
Vacancy sensors recall scene 16 on vacancy. If you have more than one sensor in a Zoom space, their occupancy state is OR together for occupancy and ANDed together for vacancy. This means that the room becomes vacant when all sensors report vacancy. Every load controller keeps a table of the occupancy sensors that are part of that room and their individual state. Photo sensors don't do anything out of the box. One must first run the calibration process to tell the Zoom system how bright each load controller should be based on the amount of light coming into the space. Something else to keep in mind is that when you first form Zoom networks, pair keypads and loads together, the keypads use broadcast to recall scenes. Due to the way broadcast commands are handled, you can only have a maximum number of broadcasts within a given time or issues can arise. This ratio is 8 broadcasts within 9 seconds. Binding keypads to load controller removes this limitation. When binding is performed, the keypads use unicast or group messages instead of broadcast messages. This will allow you to keep turning your lights on and off indefinitely. When commissioning a Zoom site, these steps should be followed as a basis or standard practice. Start by forming a network. This should be performed on one device per Zoom area. Forming a network automatically puts the Zoom system into permit join. Go ahead and join the devices that belong to that same space. Walk around and change scene settings. Optionally, you can set binding. As a general concept, forming requires a specific tap and hold sequence, just like the EX devices. We will dive into details of this in a later training video. Finally, we want to leave you with a good set of actions to follow if you have any doubts. Always view and go through the manuals, which is, by the way, all available through the Zoom app. As we expand our online database, we want you to be able to refer to our Crestron help IDs posted online. Each help ID speaks about the symptom and how to go about resolving it. Double check your designs. Get someone else to give you their two cents in on it. They may see something you may be overlooking. Don't forget to consider the environment. Were concrete walls or other structures that may affect propagation of wireless signals. Please see our other videos for further breakdown of Zoom, like the Zoom Floor Hub video or the Wireless Install Best Practices. For additional help, please dial our commercial lighting support. Thank you for watching, and we hope your next project is a Zooming Breeze.